This is Eric White. This screencast is the second in a series of screencasts on getting started with OpenXML development. In this screencast, we're going to focus on the tools you need to use to do OpenXML development. The first tool that you need to be aware of is the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio 2010. This tool enables you to drag and drop any OpenXML document onto Visual Studio and open up the various parts and edit the various parts in Visual Studio using the XML editor. This tool is important both because it enables you to view OpenXML markup and it enables you to make small edits to OpenXML markup and view the results of those edits in Microsoft Office or some other viewer for OpenXML. I'll show you how this works. First I'll create a Microsoft Word document. Open the document, insert some text, save it, and close it. Now I can drag and drop this document onto Visual Studio. I can navigate through the various parts I can see the relationships. The relationships are these nodes in the tree that are represented by this little linked chain. XML parts in the package are represented by this little icon. You can see it has a little less than and greater than sign which denotes that this is an XML part. One thing I like to do is I like to configure the XML editor in Visual Studio so that it aligns XML attributes each on their own line. The way to do this is you go to Tools, Options, Expand Text Editor, go to XML, Expand Formatting, and check this option here, Align Attributes each on a separate line. Now I'm going to open the main document part. I'll right click on it and click open. When you first open it, you see the XML exactly as Word wrote that XML to the document, which is to say that there is no insignificant white space in the document, there's no formatting, and the XML is not indented. However, I can go to the Edit menu, go to Advanced, and select Format Document, and now I can see the XML in a better way. Because I have aligned attributes each on a separate line, I can see, for instance, all of the namespaces in this document. In an element such as PGMAR, or the page margins, I can see the various page margins in a much easier way because I have aligned the attributes each on a separate line. I can come into this markup and change the markup, save it, and I don't even need to close it here in Visual Studio. I can just come over to Windows Explorer and open up the document and see the results. Further, I can change this document right here. I can save it and close Word. Now when I click on Visual Studio, it tells me this file has changed outside the editor. Do you wish to reload it? I'll click yes. Now, of course, the XML is not indented again because Word just wrote that XML. So I want to format it again. The shortcut that I use all the time is I press Control E, Control D to format the XML. And we can now see the results of the changes that I made to the document. We can see that the text now is Hello World. This ability to look at markup, view the markup in Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel or Microsoft PowerPoint, change the document in one of those applications, save it, and then look at the markup in Visual Studio again. This is a really 
important tool that makes it easy to start learning about the formats. The next important tool is the OpenXML SDK 2.0 Productivity Tool. You can download the Productivity Tool from the same location where you download the OpenXML SDK. For me, one of the most important features of the Productivity Tool is its ability to compare OpenXML documents. This ability to compare documents makes it easy to research markup. Suppose I want to find out how to center a paragraph and how to make a paragraph be right justified. First, I will create a Word document. I'll call this test01. I'll insert three paragraphs. I'll save this document and close it. Now I will copy test01 and paste it and rename it. Rename it to test02. Now edit the document. I'll make this paragraph be centered and I'll make this paragraph be right justified. Save it and close it. Open up the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. Compare files. I'll browse to the directory that contains those two documents that I just created and I'll compare test01 to test02. The productivity tool will tell me all of the parts that have changed. I know, for instance, that I'm probably not interested in the changes in the settings part, the app part, and the core part. But if you are researching a feature of OpenXML that you have no idea about the kind of markup that it needs to enable that feature, then you may need to look at any part that changed. In this case, I'm pretty sure that the change is in the document.xml part. I'll look at the difference. Here I can see the markup that was added to center that paragraph, and here I can see the markup that was added to write justify the third paragraph. The next interesting feature of the OpenXML SDK productivity tool is its ability to generate code to generate any arbitrary document. I'll create a new Microsoft Visual Studio project. I'll make it a Windows.NET Framework 4 console application. I'll call it Generate Document and create the solution. I'll add the references to the OpenXML SDK and to the Windows Base Assembly. I'll now open up that Test02 document. I'll make sure that this root node is selected and click Reflect Code. This generates a bunch of code that is everything that you need to generate that document. I'll right click and select Copy All Code go back to Visual Studio. I'll select everything in my program.cs and paste it. And now I'll write a main method. This little main method just creates an instance of the generated class. This is the class that was generated by the OpenXML SDK 2.0 productivity tool. Of course, in a production application, you'd probably want to rename this class to something more meaningful for your particular scenario. And then I call this method create package, and I'll pass it the name out.docx. Now I'll run the application. It runs. There is out.docx. And when I look at it, this document matches exactly the document that I reflected in the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. You can create code in this fashion 
for all three types of OpenXML documents, including Word documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. You can then go into that code and parameterize it and generalize it and make it appropriate for your particular scenario. This facility enables you to get up and going with the document generation solution very, very quickly. The next feature of the OpenXML SDK 2.0 productivity tool to highlight is the ability to browse the OpenXML SDK documentation. I'll click here to open up the documentation. Let's say that I want to read about the paragraph element. I type in paragraph. There is the paragraph element in the word processing ML namespace. I double click on it. And now I can see the documentation for the paragraph class. I can see the various child elements. Let's say I want to look at the documentation for the run element. I can click there and see the documentation for the run element. And I can see, of course, all the children elements of the run element and so on. This documentation also establishes the correspondence between the markup elements and the classes in the OpenXML SDK. So here we can see that the markup for a paragraph is the P element in the word processing ML namespace. And we can see that the element name for the body element is body in the word processing ML namespace. And the open XML SDK class names are paragraph and body respectively. And finally, we can use the OpenXML SDK productivity tool to validate a document. Often, when you are writing an application to generate an OpenXML document of some type or another, you want to find out whether your code is generating valid markup. The OpenXML SDK 2.0 productivity tool can help with that. Let's make one of these documents an invalid document. I'm going to drag and drop test02.docx. I'm going to drag it onto Visual Studio. I'm going to open document.xml. I am going to format the markup. And now I am going to delete this paragraph element. So this made the run element be a child of the body element, and that's invalid. I'll save it open up the productivity tool. I'll open that document. And now I'll click validate. And it tells me there is one error in this package. And the error is in the body element. And the part is the main document part. Here is the XPath expression that indicates the element that contains the error. And here it tells me the element has invalid child element here is the namespace, and the invalid element name is R, which is the run element. Another tool that can make OpenXML development easier is Power Tools for OpenXML. Power Tools for OpenXML is an open source project on CodePlex that contains example code that can provide guidance on how to do various types of OpenXML development. The power tools for OpenXML are a set of PowerShell commandlets that enable you to modify and query OpenXML documents. They are written in C Sharp. In addition to using the commandlets, you can also write C Sharp programs that use the core methods in power tools for OpenXML. Power tools for OpenXML are licensed under the Microsoft Public License. You can find the text of the license here. The Microsoft Public License gives you wide latitude in how you use the code. There are a lot of resources that can help you get started with Power Tools for OpenXML. You can find links to all of these resources at powertools.codeplex.com. One website to pay special attention to is the Power Tools for OpenXML Resource Center on openxmldeveloper.org. You can find the Resource Center here. The easiest way to 
see the list of PowerShell commandlets that you can use in Power Tools for OpenXML is to use this command, get command module OpenXML Power Tools. This lists the various commandlets that are part of the Power Tools. Another way to validate that an OpenXML document is valid is to use this commandlet confirm OpenXML valid. Here we have the testo1.docx and testo2.docx documents. Testo1 is a valid document. Testo2 we made invalid just a bit ago. If we enter the command confirm OpenXML valid and pass a valid document to it, it doesn't report any errors. If I pass an invalid document to it, I can see the errors that are in that document. Further, if I have a whole directory of documents and I want to validate that every document in that directory is valid, I can enter the command and this will report just the invalid documents. Another way that we can use Power Tools for OpenXML is to simplify the markup so that we can see more easily what is going on. I'll create a Word document, test.docx. I'll insert a paragraph. I'll make some changes here. So, for instance, here I'm going to add a comment. Here I'm going to insert a bookmark. I'll go to the Review tab. I'll turn on Track Changes and replace the period with an exclamation mark. I'll now turn off Track Changes. I'll select the S and make that S bolded. I'll save this document. Let's look at the document in Visual Studio. I'll open it and format the XML. And here is the markup for that paragraph. It starts here. There are various runs. There are comment range start and comment range end elements, bookmark start and bookmark end elements, and so on. It makes it a little difficult to see the markup that were generated when I made that character be bold, and I want to see what that markup is. What I can do is I can use a commandlet to remove the markup that I don't care about. Remove OpenXML markup. I'll remove RSID info. I'll remove comments. I'll remove bookmarks. I'll accept revisions. And I'll run that on test.docx. Now let's look at the markup of test.docx. And here is that paragraph. It's easy to see exactly the changes that were made when I bolded that S because I've removed all of the extraneous markup that I don't care about. You will find it interesting to explore all of the various options of remove OpenXML markup. In addition, you will find it interesting to explore the rest of the commandlets and source code in Power Tools for OpenXML. All of the functionality in all of these commandlets is also available to you as C Sharp code, so you can integrate or use this functionality in manage.net programs that you write. These are the three main tools that I use when I do OpenXML development. One key point about these tools, these tools are important to you even if you are writing code for platforms other than .NET. If you are, for instance, writing code in Java or PHP that creates or manipulates OpenXML documents, you will probably want to also have these tools available to you to aid you in your development effort. In the next video in this series of videos, I'm going to discuss the various scenarios for OpenXML development.